Hey everyone, it's Scopefield's Flowers Podcast Season 2. It's World Whiskey Day. We're we talking about Japanese whiskey, true crime with the Yakuza, the NHL, Royal Wedding, and Freddie getting married. All right, here we are again. Freddie, it's great to see you, buddy. Great seeing you. It's been a while. Oh, my God. I mean, it's, uh, it's been crazy. A lot of things have been going on, and uh, we uh, thank our... We're actually in season two. Can you believe it? Season two. Who would have thought we would have lost <laughs> uh, past one season? I thought we were going to get canceled after the first episode, but here we are. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, we have uh, gained a lot of new uh, uh, fans, and uh, people are really checking us out on uh, on our Instagram at Schofield's Flowers. Uh, and uh, I and, and scopefieldsflowers.com. I mean, swag yeah. is going like crazy, so it's it's a it's a good thing. And uh, we just needed that time to regroup, and uh, we've both been busy. Very busy. I know uh, there's some big news uh, on your end. What, what have you been up to, Scope? Well, I've had uh, a couple interesting calls from different attorneys, and uh, I was in New York and met with uh, a couple publishers, and I'm very excited to say that actually one publisher is uh, very interested and asked me if I would want to write a trilogy, and I was, absolutely. So um, wow. we're uh, continuing to talk, and I found a really great attorney, and uh, so we'll see what happens with that. That's a lot of work, of course, but I mean, there's nothing better than sitting back and, uh, and uh, having a, a cigar and uh, a scotch or a whiskey and mm -hmm. um, uh, being able to uh, do a little bit of writing. And isn't there something uh, you've been meeting with CBS? What's uh, what's going on there? Is that something different or the I, same? I have, I have. I met well. I met with CBS and uh, uh, one of the exec producers over there, a friend of mine that I worked with him uh, back in the day, and uh, he was saying, you know, if you thought about uh, getting a uh, underwriter for your show, and I said I have, and so I've been reaching out to several different uh, clients that I know and different. Uh, uh, people that I think would have a, a true interest in it, and we're getting a really great interest. So we're in the middle of uh, creating a beautiful script right now, a short, a, more of a, a treatment, uh, as they would call it. I uh, just got it in yesterday, and uh, uh, we'll be sending out packages. I found some really great people uh, to get behind it, and uh, we're super excited. So kind of segueing there, I know you were at the Mob Museum in Vegas promoting the book. Um, but you know, we're going a little recap back to uh, season one. There, we talked about the Vegas Golden Knights. Oh my God! Absolutely. And uh, they are now one game away from the Stanley Cup final. Can you believe that? Unbelievable. I mean, just it's such a great thing to see these players who are probably considered the best second line uh, team in the in the entire NHL. I mean, they they are players that were uh, not not protected, and uh, then they were picked up by the Knights, and uh, I can't say a better, uh, anything better than say congratulations to George McPhee out there yeah. for putting together in his uh, coaching staff. I mean, he just got nominated for GM of the Year. I, 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 if he doesn't win it, there's some sort of fix in the NHL <laughs> because the, what he's been able to do, um, now, like you said, these are guys that were sixth and seventh forwards, you know, fourth and fifth defensemen. Um, guys on expiring deals, a little bit older in their career, but yep. a lot, a lot of young guys who are just um, on the on the cusp of making it. And for them to all come together and not just do well in the regular season or yep. better than expected, but to win the Pacific. And they've only lost three games now in the entire first three rounds of the the playoffs. I mean, obviously they have uh, a couple more games here in the second or in the third round, the conference finals, but. I mean, I, I don't see them losing the next three games straight. No. So I, no. I, I, I mean, their forecheck was unreal last night. The game was unbelievable. They, they were just all over uh, Winnipeg, which Winnipeg's a great team. I just think um, these these kids, uh, it really gets down to they want it more right now. They and absolutely do. They got a chip on their shoulder. These are teams who said, you know, in some cases, like uh, I think it's Marsha shot, right. Marsha so, they made a deal with uh, with Florida Panthers. To take an, another player from their roster as long as they took Marsha Show. So That's they basically cute. were saying, take him, we want everyone else on our team. And the Panthers didn't even make the playoffs. Yeah. So it's deals yeah. like that that got done that you gotta think he really worked the system. He really found the right guys that played the style that they wanted to play, yep. which is this new NHL where you gotta have four lines. They're not concerned as much about matchups like other teams are. Yep. They have 
four lines that can all score. Yes, they have a couple guys that are their top guys that are scoring for them. But in these playoffs, it's been line one, two, three, and four scoring the goals for them with guys who maybe had six goals last year, and now they're scoring 40 this season. I so. mean, it's unbelievable. It's a stats business now, too. Just like a business is, they're mm -hmm. breaking it down every minute. I mean, they have... Um, when they get out of the, uh, when they're in between the s s periods, they'll go in their locker room and it's already, already up on the, on a big screen and they're breaking it down by the nanosecond of everything that's yep. happening and everything. The training these kids are getting nowadays are just absolutely insane. And, uh, yeah, they have a, uh, it's, it, and the opening, I, I, did you see the show? Yesterday, I, I didn't see the opening. I saw when they played the Kings and they had uh, a little knight and king duel. Right. But uh, I, I don't know what they did this year oh, or this well, series. Well, they opened up with the knight coming out, and okay. they have the big castle in the background. They got yeah. Wayne Newton sitting there. Wow. With, <laughs> Wayne Newton sitting there with all the fans around him with the big siren that he's just pumping away on. The place is going crazy. Then another guy character comes out in a in an armor, and he's fighting in a and a kilt and everything, and he was from Winnipeg. They call mm -hmm. them the Pegs, I guess, okay. in Winnipeg. And they start battling with their swords and everything, and the next thing you know, he drops his sword and he just gets whooshed away up into the rafters. <laughs> Man, we got to go check that out. So I think if they go to the Stanley Cup Finals, we're going to have to uh, make a little road trip out there and uh, take our flamingo with us and, and find plan it. Plant that sucker in the uh, the flamingo lot there. Absolutely, we. I owe you because I I, I didn't know the actual question of when it was uh, opened up and, and things like that. So That's right. I can't even wait to get out there. I think it'd be a blast, even if we don't uh, get into the stadium with the, because I can't imagine how much the seats are going to be going for. Yeah. But I mean, also the gambling aspect of it. I mean, there are people that put down. I heard about a guy that just put down. Um, a thousand dollars and it's five hundred to one. That's incredible. That's incredible. The kind of money I and, mean. So. And I think at the time he was probably thinking, well, it's a thousand bucks. I wanted you know. to tables. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. And, and now it's yep. looking like a legit chance that could come through, which will be interesting for Vegas. But yeah, yeah. It's it's just as interesting as it can get. So. I was going to say talking uh, something a little bit uh, night related, but uh, on a different continent. Uh, the royal wedding that uh, took place last night. Oh, it, it, it's absolutely fantastic to watch. I, although, our, to just see the hoopla, to mm -hmm. see what's building up around it and everything, I think it's wonderful for the, for the country. Um, I was invited to go to the Cat and Fiddle, who's one of our sponsors of our show, and uh, last night, but I had to get ready for this. But they had a full 24-hour uh, marathon, and uh, I know it was, I'm going to stop by after I get done here today, but I know it was absolutely, had to have been chaos and just as fun as ever, because it's a wonderful place to go to over on Highland Avenue here, but... Uh, Wasn't there some controversy, though, about the whole royal wedding or, or royalty in, in England? Yep, I mean, there's always a group out there, too, that are against uh, the money that is being spent. I hmm. think it's a total, I think I read it was $43 million are being spent wow. on this event. But I can't imagine the kind of money that's actually coming back right. at the country. And uh, because I've been to London several times. And mm -hmm. Have you been? I it? have been. And Great have time. Seen, have you seen the changing of the guard and everything? Changing of the guard. Yeah. I saw the uh, Buckingham Palace, a couple other castles. Just incredible. I mean, that's world history. That's something that, you know, for being from, you know, U.S., we don't have that. So going there and seeing what, you know, not just couple hundred years ago was like but thousands of years yeah, ago yeah. the history yeah. and everything it, it was it, there's was something kind of different in the air there i would yeah, say yeah i would i would have to say uh from my end i hope they embrace it it's uh great for the country and uh uh and they're a beautiful couple and uh i wish them the best and uh talk about couples <laughs> i uh and another royal wedding i heard uh you just popped a question to your young lady, and you're getting married. I did, yeah. We uh, we threw her off uh, the scent a little bit, had some friends invite us up to Big Bear to stay at their cabin. Nice. Um, so it wasn't me planning something per se, even though I had them invite us. Right. And uh, we went down to, to Big Bear Lake, and you know we were just kind of skipping rocks, and our friend was taking some photos of nature. <laughs> and uh, you know, got down on one knee, and uh, her first response was, "What, <laughs> guys?" And so uh, we'll have to throw you know the little uh, clip up on our uh, on our YouTube channel for you guys to see. But uh, we're really excited. We're gonna have our uh, less royal wedding uh, later on this year, and 
Um, if we can get a sponsor to uh, throw up some cash for all 30 people there and maybe another 30 watching, we can uh, <laughs> we can make it a little more royal. Well, well, maybe I'll reach out to Crown Royal and see if they'd be a sponsor. That, that would, would be, be wonderful. Great. That well, would be I'll great. raise a glass and toast to your wedding. Thing. Congratulations, buddy. I appreciate I'm going to be happier though. for you. Um, now, Scofie, what were you... You said you did something this weekend, but I, I didn't catch what it was. Um, <laughs> I, it sounded, it, it, there's a lot of wind going. I think you're on your motorcycle or something, but. No, actually, I had my head sticking out of my car, and I was <laughs> screaming how much I enjoyed running out to uh, the caravan outpost. It's just, uh, again, I went out there and needed to get away from everything. It's yeah. like just, it's, it's an amazing uh, nature run, and uh, uh, it's, a, I guess it would be called glamping, but uh, right? I just love it. I mean. Uh, you get out there. I took the wife out, and we went out and had a nice little weekend together in uh, the city of Ojai and uh, saw our good friends, Brad and uh, his wife, and, uh, yeah, it's just a fantastic place. I keep saying it. I got to go. Uh, I know we're going to Aruba for our honeymoon, but... Um, you know, maybe a little staycation up in uh, Caravan Outpost in Ojai would be a nice little treat. Yeah. Um, you know, sometime before that. Yeah. Well, they've been good to us. They gave us a uh, giveaway uh, for our opening over at the Sassafras. So we like to thank them. They are a sponsor again for this segment. And if anyone wants to get out to see Caravan Outpost, go to caravanoutpostojai.com. Hi, Freddie. What's going on, Scope? <laughs> it's a little cozy over here, huh? It sure is. I think we got a, a big guest today. We do. We do. Who we got for uh, us? We've got uh, Stephen Bridges, who uh, is a, uh, a good friend of mine and rides uh, with me on the 59 Club. Awesome. And uh, he's a uh, whiskey enthusiast. And uh, today just happens to be Whiskey Day, Worldwide Whiskey Day. Wow. And uh, Stephen's going to uh, be uh, bringing some of his... Uh, uh, top shelf uh, Japanese whiskeys, and, uh, we're gonna, and, <laughs> yeah, and we're going to and we're going to do a little tasting today. All right, Stephen, right? come on in. <laughs> hey, 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 guys. How's it going? Good Friday. Hey, hey, hey Stephen, great awesome. seeing you always. This has been great. Yes, happy World Whiskey Day. Well, yes. thank you very, yeah, very thanks much. Thanks for referring to me as enthusiast, not, not expert. <laughs> yeah, right. I'll leave that to the experts. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So I mean, actually, Stephen, I just got back from a ride up to uh, Kern County with the fifty nine. Well, actually, with the the Britain Rebels, and, and, and he was actually, he's up for being inducted into, uh, not the Hall of Fame, unfortunately, but into our, not yet, <laughs> not yet into our group, and he made it through alive uh, riding with this group, because I'll tell you what, these guys love to ride out there, but, uh, and yeah. Stephen did bring some really great whiskey, but not Ooh. the, I don't believe it was the Japanese, was it? Um, was it the Japanese that we tasted? I can't remember. Yes, we did. We had yeah. a, uh, we had a different version of what this is. Okay. This is, uh, this is the uh, the, the uh, Nika Pure Malt twelve uh, year old. Wow! Right. So they uh, well, well, this is one in, in a series of things we're going to try today. But and I think we have some samples set up for that one. It, yeah. Denise, yeah. can you uh, can you bring us some of those samples? I'm ready to get in here. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't waste a minute. So, no, yeah, I was no. going to say. Um, <laughs> Thank yeah, you. no. This is a this is this is a fantastic uh, whiskey. This one, Thank the you. one we when the one we had up at uh, at at the at the, uh, at, the at the Moto Camp. Was uh, was thank you. Was a little different. Um, it's uh, one that the Japanese have kind of made for uh, uh, the, the new market, the new marketing scheme. Now it's mm -hmm. um, they're running out of stock for a lot of the twelve-year-olds. You're not going to see a lot of the twelve-year-old whiskeys around. Uh, you're going to see Ooh, these non-age statements. Great. But but before we jump into all that, I, we we do have a, a number of twelve-year-olds that we are going to try. Wow. So. so. I mean that's in another uh, segment. In, 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 that in might the best be a way. Yeah. Story. <laughs> we'll be, I mean, that, I mean that we'll be acting way. like twelve-year-olds. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But at any rate, um, so anyway, well, here's a toast to, oh. to my to my first uh, first podcast and well, and uh, helping out with uh, with this. But oh, and thank to you very whiskey. much. So, and and thank Denise, you. Uh, thank you very much for uh, pouring these lovely drinks for us. And uh, um, well, so, I'm going to so, get right so to it. So before before you drink though, you want to so so the glass we have we have a Glen Karen glass. Which has kind of been designed specifically for, for sampling, tasting, nosing whiskey. You want to take some some good deep swifts mm -hmm. of that. The swirling doesn't help. It's not like wine. Um, but if you get kind of like some of the why not? Yeah. <laughs> why not? Yeah. So, 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 so the design the design of the glass is to, is to help you actually yeah, take the aromas yeah. and, and move that move that up out and, and mm. into into the nose, into the nose of the glass. So you can you kind of get You still do those. smell it like the wine. I mean, yeah. you want to know what, yes. you're, what you're drinking. 
And yeah. It surely isn't ripple, I can tell you that. For for a Schofield's Flowers podcast, it is Ooh. florally. Yes. Yes. So, you, so you're definitely getting some of the honey, some of the floral stuff, okay. uh, some some fruit tones to it. Mm. Wow. So I go ahead and take a little sip. All right. Mm. That kind of wash over your palate a little bit. Mm. One thing you can do is kind of hold it in the front of your uh, in the front of your mouth. And kind of chew a little bit. Don't, I just started doing swallowing. that. Yeah, but I don't even know when I had to helps. chew. I was like, mm. it's sort of like you're like, it's got, uh, <laughs> got a, a nutty. Yeah. Nutty There's a little bit of little bit of oak for sure. Okay. Uh, mm. You're getting you're getting it's it's pretty even balanced. The thing with Japanese whiskeys, unlike say uh, Scottish whiskeys, where a lot of them have that that characteristic smoky campfire kind of uh, a nose and flavor and taste to that, um, you're getting a little sweeter. On mm. the Japanese side, mm. a because it's water, oh. also because they don't have peat in Japan. Huh? So, really? Yes. They, oh, very interesting. And as you kind Ooh. of finish, kind of just let it go, kind of get those scents of uh, the, the 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 new the other flavors that are coming on the finish. So a little clean. You're getting usually uh, some almond, like in this. I get almond on this. I get a little bit of apple notes. Um, you know, a lot of, a lot of Jap like I said, a lot of Japanese is sweeter, so you're going to get some of those. Some of the other ones, we'll get the toffee, caramels, mm -hmm. you know, all those. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, all so those Steven, good, I know you guys ride together, so that's, you know, how you guys yeah. met. But how did you get into Japanese whiskey specifically? Um, a friend of mine, she, uh, she turned me on to whiskey. Mm -hmm. um, was she Japanese? She was not Japanese. <laughs> she was German. Um, but... Uh, we started going. She took me to a uh, she took me to a, a, a tasting event um, through uh, through High Times Wine. Um, gosh, I don't know, fifteen years ago. Wow! And <clears throat> we went in, and she actually brought her father, and I brought my father. My dad loved loved scotch and, mm -hmm. and whiskey. And um, anyway, we uh, she she turned me on and says, "Oh, you got to come try this." And so she took me straight to the the, the Suntory table where they're pouring Yamazaki. 12 mm -hmm. and Yamazaki 18, which are, mm -hmm. are kind of keystone products and keystone, keystone expressions in, in, in the whiskey world, especially with Japanese. But uh, they, they poured this and I was, I was blown away. Wow. Um, and so I kind of started that. I started buying bottles maybe a couple times a year, taking mm -hmm. me a little while to finish it. And then, um, and then I kind of, after, well, it kind of goes into after my father passed away, he had a bunch of great scotch in his cupboard, and my mom was like, "Oh, here, just just take it all," and uh, so I took it, and and so I, I was drinking it one night, and I, and I was smoking a cigar, and I, I put oh. a photo up on Instagram um, of this of uh, pretty much a, a different version of this, right? And and a cigar, and I and I woke up the next morning, and I had like 90 likes. Wow! I'm like, I've never That's had 90 cool. likes on <laughs> anything in my life, so <laughs> I. Uh, when uh, I and I kind of looked at see who was liking it, and I found out there's this this huge community out there of 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 influencers and and evangelists and brand ambassadors that that really and and just started you know just posting their own personal photos, not necessarily marketing and corporate right, right, stuff, right. but their own personal things about where they're going, what they're drinking, who they're drinking it with, mm. um, what they're finding, and, and writing up uh, uh, tasting notes and. And um, and reviews, mm -hmm. and so I kind of thought, you know, I gosh, I could do that. So right. <laughs> I posted a few more and got started getting more likes, and then I, I started uh, I started Whiskey Spy. So oh, wow. I created a little another little offshoot of my Instagram called Whiskey Spy. Is that a so it's Instagram, not a blog? Yes, it's okay. Instagram right now. And so it's um, Whiskey Spy. Whiskey Spy. Yes. No, we, no we in whiskey. So I W H I S K Y S P Y. Yes, Whiskey okay. Spy. Yes. And so I started that, and I started posting. I started doing more reviews, started buying more things, started getting a lot of followers. I mean, I don't have, I don't have the uh, organic growth on Instagram is hard. Mm -hmm. So, right. um, you know, I don't have a ton of followers, but I have the right followers. Right. So there's there's some fantastic people that are following me, and that I'm following back, and and I've learned so much through just the collaboration and discussion, and with with a lot of these a lot of these people, and it's been this entire world that opened up and you know unfortunately you know, as a result of my dad passing away unfortunately i wish he was around to see it 
But a lot of his whiskey, and he loved Johnny Walker, mm -hmm. and he had a, a lot of great bottles and old bottles of Johnny Walker of all colors. And so right. I started a little <clears throat> photography um, kind of project, some writing projects with it. I've done a little bit of review writing for some other people. And, um, you know, I, I don't know. It's, just, it's, a, it's a fun, creative little outlet and, and side yeah. project to uh, to my, my my regular IT world. That uh, I, that so I'm in, so. where we live in, you know, greater LA area, Orange County, where are some good bars to go get Japanese whiskeys? Um, there's definitely a few. I mean, the one that comes to mind, um, which which most people probably know, is going to be Seven Grand oh, in downtown LA. Grand. If you yeah, know, been there many if you times. know. If you know Seven Grand, the Two One Three Spirit Society, yep. Yep. they do. Uh, they, they've got pretty much anything you'd ever want to have. And what's yep. interesting about them too is that within the bar, there's a bar within the bar. So they have Bar Jackalope, which which kind of started, I think, really kind of from a Japanese whiskey base, but just really rare things and and interesting things that um, you could get. They do some tastings on. You know, if you go out to their go out to their page on on the Two One Three Spirit Society, you can. You can find out when their tastings are, and and they also do things with tequila and mezcals and and oh. scotches and and uh, and rum. So right, yeah, it's 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 a whole that's a whole other uh, thing. I just learned through this, and I I had no idea that any of this even existed. So, um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. And that and then then, then the whiskey kind of led into motorcycles, and you know. So how did how did whiskey get to the motorcycles? Tell us that story. So through the Instagram. Um, I started getting things in my feed about what I liked, mm -hmm. you know, rustic cabins and man <laughs> stuff and, you know, whatever. But, uh, and burly man. Vintage, yes, burly <laughs> man. Vin vintage, vintage, uh, vintage cars, vintage motorcycles. Well, then you would custom definitely builds. like these pillows that my very good friend Guy C sent me uh, because he's a burly man and I love him to death. That's, he, you you know, know what? He I think very you burly. once referred to him as a bear. He is a bear. I can't wait to. I, well, I, really, what I want is a burly scarf. Like that, so, yeah, I can't, I can't wait to get one of those. Well, you but, get them um, at uh, Schofield Flores. You can. Yes, yes. Here you and go. Selected and selected by Schofield. Selected by me. And uh, yes, I, you think must, I, might, I think I might. I think I. I'm, I'm gonna have you to would look that. good in one. We're I gonna would. dress you up on one before you leave. <laughs> <laughs> I want all the I want all the scope swag before yeah, yeah, I, before I walk out of here. They're gonna uh, think Japanese. you're they're gonna think you're me. <laughs> I'm gonna get them. I'm gonna get you wasted. I'm gonna take it all. So, um, a, few, a few of these Japanese whiskeys, and I think uh, he can take whatever he wants, and we're just gonna be like, have it. <laughs> as, long as, I'm not, as long as I'm not <laughs> committing yes. Harry Carey with my own fan. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we got our fans here. <laughs> we got a lot of fans around this place. Yeah. It's getting hot in here with this whiskey. But <laughs> anyway, no, just kind of just to finish up. So I, yeah. so like I said, I, I, I sort of, I saw, I saw these motorcycles, and I kind of thought to myself, you know, gosh, you know, why not me? And I, I said to my, I said to my wife, you know, prior to that, when, when I started the Instagram, I said, hey, honey, I was tick of wine. I said, you know, I think I'm gonna start drinking more whiskey. I'm like, okay, whatever. <laughs> and there's better health benefits and that kind of. Yeah. So it kind of used this. It sort of repeated itself with the motorcycle. I said, hey, honey, um, I think I'm gonna get my motorcycle license. Okay, where'd that come from? Well, I explained, and I told her, I said, you know, uh, this is, I, I just think it's cool. And she's like, she looked at me, she's like, yeah, you know, why not you? Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, that's partly why I married her. I mean, she's fantastic. Oh, so, that's wonderful. That's awesome. So, yeah. I, uh, so congratulations, by the way. Yes, yeah, yes, so yes. Cheers yeah, to that. Cheers yeah. to that. I'm um, already out. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, let's help you. The Irish in him. Never, pour, never <laughs> pour your own whiskey, right? Yeah, right. So okay. It's the Irish in him. Uh, yeah, thanks like a fish. Yeah. Um, I'm good on You're this. Good for this yeah, well, my family would make you swim with the fishes, yeah. if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Bada boom. Yeah, but, boom but the yeah. Italians actually, unfortunately, wiped us out. So Yeah, oh, yeah well. score one that's, for the pasta guys. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's not a previous podcast, right? I think yeah, that's it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a book. Every podcast. And, and a poster yeah, book, yeah, which yeah, I, I still every haven't podcast, seen the poster. You've got to remind me that he wiped me out. <laughs> you know? All we talk yeah. about is the Irish crime. Yeah. We never talk about the Italians, although we did once and we dressed up for it because, yeah, you know, yeah. the, the Italians are a little more classy, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And we had Tommy. And we had who, Tommy, um, uh, R.I.P. Yeah, he yeah, showed up in a suit, <laughs> a yeah. wet suit. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Tommy. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, we've replaced Tommy with Denise, and I have to say, Denise much better looking, much better looking, easier on the eyes, easier on the eyes, better personality, better personality. What else? Just a fantastic, fantastic. Person. Yeah. And and I must say, the mother to my grandchild, Oliver Nolan Schofield. Thank you. And oh. my sons, 
Yeah, I don't think you would want uh, Tommy to uh, all of a sudden be the mother of your grandchildren. No, I wouldn't. That'd be a problem. <laughs> I would like, Tommy, what are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> so you know what? So so Denise, if you know, give that. I, I can't I can't compete with that. Yeah. But I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna toast you guys with uh, something a little more special. Awesome. Which uh, I think we're gonna move on from from uh, uh, Takatsuru here and uh, try a different one. Um, the uh, yes, we have the. We have, so we're going to jump right into number 99, number 99. of the 101 whiskeys of the number of 100 of the 101 whiskeys to try before you die. You. Oh. So we have a, a Yamazaki. So the other 12 year old I was talking about this is a Yamazaki mm. 12. Um, this is uh, this is, this is fantastic. This is one of the first ones I ever had. Uh, at the time I bought it, uh, the first bottle I bought was like $30 a bottle. Mm -hmm. Now it's about $130. Wow. So, wow. Huh. you know, yeah, it, they, they're like a stock. It's almost better than most stocks, wow. right? That's but um, the, the glass you guys had, so we had the Glen Cairn before. We're going to move on to Very cool. um, uh, what is a, a double walled Nolan whiskey I glass. I noticed that. A double um, Nolan so glass. Double walled Nolan whiskey what's glass. What's the significance the of Nolan? So, the significance <laughs> of this, if you see the, uh, so the first thing you notice is that you've got a glass, it's kind of a glass within the glass, right? Um, you've got a, uh, something, so your, your, the temperature of your hand, mm -hmm. um, it's not going to interfere with, with the whiskey, not that temperature necessarily matters, but either mm -hmm. way, it keeps the fingerprints off, it keeps it a little more clear, you can kind of, uh, you can see it a little bit better. Hold it, let um, me see. Yes. Oh yeah, I'm <laughs> dialing right in right now. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. There you go. <laughs> it's, you've got these, you've got these facets on the side. To help you hold on to it, so you can you can look at it, you can you can nose it, you can uh, without it. necessarily uh, yeah you can you can caress it a little bit. Um, but let's. I love my whiskey. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> this this is one you'd want to. So let's just before you oh, before wow. you dive into drinking this, let's. Wow. Uh, this is let's, this um, needs to be the official drink of Schofield's Flowers. Mm. Mm. Don't drink this it yet. Very just nose it. So that, that so this glass is good. specifically designed also for the same thing for nosing. Mm. Um, they're saying it's an upgrade to the the, the Glen Cairn, which is really a, was designed in I believe Britain or Scotland mm -hmm. specifically uh, for tasting whiskey. But once you kind of get into the Yamazaki, you're gonna you're gonna really kind of mm. go up. I mean, you're getting you're getting really the two the two uh, most influential whiskey makers in Japan, and really the, the two figures that kind of started wow. it all. That's You've got, huh? yeah. So this first one is is um, is a, uh, uh, <laughs> what's his name? Ooh, much smokier. Masataka. 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 Uh, thank you, Soto. thank you, Masataka. Hey. Uh, hey. <laughs> um, so and then you and then you've also got um, Soji Tori, or, or I'm sorry, Shin, Soji. Shinjiro Tor Soji Tori. Tori. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I can't say their names, but the uh, again enthusiast, not expert. Um, but this is this is this is one of the first ones. This this gentleman here was hired by the one who started this, and actually they created they together they created the Yamazaki Distillery, oh. one of the first distilleries in Japan. Um, he ended up leaving to go ahead and start his other distillery, Nika, and but uh, they they were doing this probably in around you know Tori first started making whiskey about nineteen about eighteen ninety nine kind of really started. Um, Creating what is now Suntory. I'm chewing. Um, and in about 1906. That's good. Uh, like that might be a problem. He hired. <laughs> What's in chewing, your glass? If chewing you're chewing like it. A, I can. It is glass. It, ah, yeah. I think yeah. when you're chewing, you, you might be chewing some of that. You're getting some of that toffee, the caramel, mm. Mm. Uh, some some kind of biscuit Fantastic. with that. Fantastic. See, I and like this one because I really like that smokiness or that that heat from uh, scotch. This mm -hmm. has a little bit more of that. I'm also a bourbon drinker, mm -hmm. so a little bit more of that kind of bourbon taste to it. And um, yeah, it, this is you're getting some nice. more oak. Really, definitely really, a little really more, really left, definitely a little more smoke and a little more oak than uh, than what you've got going on here on the uh, on the pure malt Nika. But I this, can tell you, this is some of the best stuff I've ever. I, I'm Irish. I drink. Yeah. <laughs> and and you're and you're liking this. And I'm liking this a lot. I mean, I like them both. They're I mean. I guess it would depend on what type of mood I'm in. I, I did just a little. Is I'm this getting some? seconds. <laughs> I don't want any more. <laughs> <laughs> I'm driving. 
Um, Please remember, don't drink and drive. But you know, but, but again, like you know, the, the, the <coughs> thing with Japanese again, you're, you're getting completely different fra flavor profiles outside of that traditional peat, that smoke, that some mm -hmm. of the other stuff that, that mm -hmm. happens. Um, I don't know. Love it's this. amazing. Love, it. Love the glasses it's amazing. too. So yeah. is there, a, and I, I might have missed it because had a now too. Sure. But what's the benefit to the double wall in this case? Because it's not like there's ice in it, so your hand's not warming it up. But what um, is, when you, I think it's so. A you double can double wall. Yeah, it's, it's a double wall. It's, because it's, it's, it's like, like oh, it's interesting. Just to like. To be honest, I think it makes it. It makes it. I guess you can. You can. You can see it better. Mm -hmm. You can look at the legs better. I think there's definitely something there with you know fingerprints on the glass and and mm -hmm. not being able yeah. to really see your whiskey. I mean, this yeah. is yeah. this is kind of what people do. But again, those are for those are. Those are expert things that for people that are really into nosing okay. and tasting whiskey. Yeah. But I think here's the, the great thing about it, right? And I think there's there's a lot of people, just like wine, people get very into some of these tasting notes and, and, and is it a bit pretentious and mm -hmm. maybe it's somewhat silly, but but yeah, I what I but what I like <laughs> is I like the fact that, you know, you can you can drink something and it's whatever you take out of it mm -hmm. right it's what you get it's the flavors you you like and and drink whatever <laughs> drink whatever sounds which, which is great. i mean i like this like i pair this with that like beer's looking good <laughs> <laughs> i pair this with dessert bear. back off <laughs> yes i pair this with desserts um oh. uh, i'll drink it with a steak the scotch and steak and you, and let me ask you this like so Ron Swanson, i right? don't i like whiskey straight like this right mm -hmm. i don't Agreed. like to necessarily have water anything added do you drink this also on the rocks uh, ever or so, do you like so, to uh, great question right. uh, a lot of a lot of japanese i mean a lot of their their whiskey making or, or their their whiskey drinking was right. on ice Oh, really? um, so oh. they, they make a lot of clear ice. They make ice balls. They make these things. You know, they drink. A lot of their drinks balls, are yeah. on, on ice. Um, and partly that had to do with, I think, back in the day for, you know, the, 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 the more well-to-do mm -hmm. are, the, are the people that owned ice or they could afford mm -hmm. to make ice and keep ice. And, but there's some fantastic, uh, you know, you could do, do a whole other show specifically on the, uh, the, the Japanese whiskey, you know, the highball. The, wow. the Miserari style highball, um, which is all done on ice, huh. and uh, it's it's uh, well, it's let's refreshing. This yeah. is, I mean, this you is know, absolutely fantastic. I would say we got to do a, yeah. a highball. Uh, you know, oh, it, so it's I, it's like making a martini, except you know, easy yeah. to make but yeah. hard to perfect, right? So, so Stephen, I, I think we got uh, you brought some a few other bottles. Um, we got them set them up on the other side. I think yep. let's uh, kind of regroup, and we're gonna move over to there and, and talk some more history uh, of the Japanese whiskey and, and try some more wine. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's here. get out of these seats. I'm ready to stand up. Well, thank you, everyone. Uh, this segment of our... Um, la, 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 la. <laughs> I think he's drunk, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you, everyone, uh, for this segment of our uh, podcast. Uh, the sponsor is, uh, is Schofield's Flowers because we're paying for this shit, Braddy. <laughs> Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It seems like I'm always paying for everything. But listen, we do have some... <laughs> so, uh, that's what the fiancé says. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Sorry, honey. <laughs> exactly. So, but uh, we do have some fantastic swag at schofieldsflowers.com. And uh, we'd like to uh, show it off. And uh, with uh, our um, concierge, Denise. Denise, thank you very much. Well, listen... First off, the T-shirt, it ain't going to look any better on any of you because Denise is wearing it better than anybody. That's right. <laughs> and uh, exactly. And that's an old school T-shirt. That's OG, baby. That's retro. That's retro. You can you, only find that on eBay, I believe. It's only found on eBay, scope on scope, because this all started with my old partner, Brian Kingston, who I love dearly, SOS. And, uh, and then we, we do have, well, first off, we have our beanies. And uh, the beanies, the kids just love them, I got to tell you. I have clients calling me every day going, dude, can you just send me another beanie? I said, yeah, go to scofieldsflowers.com and you can get a, another beanie, right? So um, we're very comfortable, very relaxed. Yep. Then we have our hats of Schofield's Flowers. Thank you very much, Denise. Yep, They're great, great snapbacks. Uh, oh. I love the look of them. They're, it's a different, it's not just a, a, I think they call them a... It's a three panel. Yeah, it's a three panel instead of the six panel all the way around yep um it's nice for summer so if it's you know a little warm out it has ventilation snapbacks are all the rage um great comfortable hat yeah yeah i, I actually it's i, I i'm i'm 
I got to tell you, it's the most comfortable hat I have, and I love it. Yeah. So, um, um, New Era, you better give us a call. So, uh, exactly, Schofield's Flowers with New Era, professional uh, drinking team <laughs> by the end of this episode, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, and then we have, um, we have our, uh, I definitely have my book of short stories. So, Denise, if you wouldn't mind. Well, thank you. Our book of short stories. And uh, I think for someone that's wants to have it, I tell everybody, with the book, you get an eight-pack of coasters. Ooh. Of course, with my face on them. But the fun thing is, I tell everyone, is that, that you get to cover up your face with your glass? <laughs> exactly. Um, <clears throat> but I tell everyone, have the, co have the book sitting there, and then go out and get some of this Japanese whiskey, that's for Ooh. sure. And then come back, and then lay those coasters down, and, and then people, like, when you walk away, they're going to start, oh, what's this book? And they're going to start looking at these short stories illustrated by one of the best illustrators in Los Angeles. And you start having a good laugh with the short stories of me growing up in a mob flower shop. And then all of a sudden, the guest show, the, the host shows up with the coasters, lays them out, and uh, you start pouring, and uh, people get a kick out of it. That's great. Yeah. And uh, we got other shirt designs. We got the Scope on Scope head. Yep, we got uh, the Scope on Scope. And a Schofield's Flowers t-shirt. Yep. Right now, just showing the Scope on Scope head. We're just showing this, and then the Schofield's Flowers t-shirt would be exactly that, what Denise yep. has on her hat. White shirt, black writing. Yep. Uh, yep. We got some fans. I know you're a fan, so why not fan <laughs> yourself? <laughs> exactly. I mean, Denise was our, our uh, concierge at our, our grand opening over there at Sassafras, and all the uh, women got some flowers, and then all the men that showed up that were fans of mine uh, got a fan, and uh, what better way to celebrate? Those are great. And then stickers. Oh, my God. We got stickers. And if you see them around L.A., tag them on Instagram, <laughs> and we'll uh, give you a shout-out. Yeah. So thank you. Um, th thank you for uh, watching our show, and... Uh, Sponsored by SchofieldsFlowers.com. Yeah. So, so I thought, you know, you guys, have, you, you had uh, the, the first, just a recap for everybody. We had the, um, the, uh, the, the Nika 12, which mm -hmm. is fantastic. The Yamazaki 12, which mm -hmm. is coveted by, uh, by a lot of people here. Um, we're going to kind of switch up a little bit out of that vanilla toffee thing. We're going to go more uh, forest floor, if you will. Okay. So the Hakushu uh, is another, another distillery owned by Suntory. Okay. Um, that has uh, it's, it's up in it's up in a mountainous region, forest region of, of Japan. Okay. And the water apparently is, is amazing, and I think you may get some of that as you as you as you have this. Okay. Um, you're gonna get some pine, some fresh cut grass, some 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 sort of uh, really clean notes with it. it it's it's uh, it, it finishes a lot like a really clean stock. Like, like grass, like in marijuana. No. Oh, okay. Well, like, like, grass, like, <laughs> like your field, right? Yeah, yeah right. But so, I'll feel the same way. So it's I like think. Uh, so I think. I think this is. I, I love this. This is one that, um, to me, is. Uh, it's one of the the best. The, this is the distiller's reserve, but it's very similar to the to the twelve year old. Turn the bottle a little bit. Which I, I which I didn't I didn't bring the twelve unfortunately, right. but. Um, I figured if uh, if we can have some of this distiller's reserve, this is a this one is still available. Mm. So it, it's it's one that you can still kind of get. Mm -hmm. They also make an 18 and a 10, and the 10 is is unbelievable. So what are we trying? What year? So this is this is kind of a it's it's probably a, a, a blend of different years. It's a okay. non age statement. Okay. Um, but it's the distiller's reserve. Okay. So they probably pulled from selected things of what they had. Okay. As a, as the master distiller is. Carefully put these together, and okay. if someone so, wanted to get one, where where's a good place to find a uh, I, I, like this? You can get. Uh, there's some great. Uh, Kale Wines has has a, always a great selection in, in Hollywood here. Okay, always has a great selection of of, uh, of whiskey online. Uh, I, I get things out of the Whiskey Exchange and Royal Mile Whiskies out of London. Okay. Um, we're going to pay a little bit more sometimes for the import and all that, but mm -hmm. you can get some really fantastic things. And what about uh, Orange County? Orange County, I get stuff over at High Time Wine, okay. typically. Um, right. And they, they, I mean, from wine to whiskey to any kind of alcohol you're looking for, they've got it. Right, right. It's amazing. All right. But, well, but cheers. Anyway, well, cheers. To, uh, to cheers. World Whiskey. World Whiskey world Day. Whiskey. Wait, I should smell it. So you're going to get, again, you're going to get... I don't smell as much as the last one. I mean, I smell it. So but it's a little yeah. more light. It's a little more yeah. crisp. Um, it's uh, it's got some some great pine, some great kind of other other flavors you're not going to get mm. or scent. That's nice. Nice. 
Yeah, all right, crisp, a little more light. Yeah, yeah, it is uh, sort of like a, like a, um, but then that, that, that grass, it's like that, a Pinot Grigio or something. That, right? uh, so you're not, yes, you're not, you're that not, grain. Right. Kind I think of the other thing you're kind of getting with this, or you're, you're not getting rather, is, you know, kind of some of the other, the little thicker, a little chewier, a little more viscous. This yeah. is, this no is really this crisp, one. really light. You know, I heard you're kind of viscous. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now, Stephen, you, you talked about Japanese whiskeys and, and some of the kind of origins of it, but can you kind of give us more of that history? Like, how did whiskey, which came from, you know, Irish or Scotland, depending on who you talk to, mm -hmm. how did it end up then in, in, ja in Japan? I know how it came to so, the Americas because yeah. they immigrated over. In the, in the, uh, in the, in the uh, late 1800s, you had, um, you had a lot of... Uh, uh, wealthy Japanese that were bringing whiskey in from from America, right. right, or getting it, right, um, through Europe or America, and, and right. they were that was kind of it became sort of a well to drink, different than the than the sochus and the rice whiskeys and the sweeter plum wines, mm -hmm. things that were kind of more characteristic in Japan at the time. So you've got you've got this sort of new drink that the, that the elite were drinking. Uh, and enjoying, and then, then, and, and, and then you had people that were interested in whiskey. So as I as I mentioned, um, uh, uh, Takatsuru, he had gone, actually gone to Japan, uh, gone to Scotland, mm -hmm. and, and he has a degree in chemistry. But he was studying chemistry and art of whiskey making, and so he wow. learned how to make whiskey there. He brought it back. He he he, uh, he t uh, connected up again with. Um, uh, Shinjiro um, mm -hmm. Toki, mm -hmm. who started Yamazaki and some other, and, and the Hakushu distillery, and, and own, basically the owner of Suntory, or started Jesus, Suntory, what is now Suntory. It's a lot of history. I, I don't even know it all. <laughs> Again, <laughs> did he get a kill? I don't think he's got kill. his own, he doesn't have his own tartan, but you know. Is that what he call a tartan? Well, it's the pattern, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm English, so I, I, yeah. I don't know. I don't yeah, know. yeah. yeah. Well, I'm Irish, so fuck it. Exactly. Anyways, <laughs> fuck but I'm actually, 50, <laughs> I'm actually 50%, so I'm hitting myself like... Can you, can you? But, at any rate, so, so, they, so they had started... Uh, so they, they started making whiskey, and right? it was about 1920, mm -hmm. um, is, is really when it kind of got into its, its the, the origins of it, it's really when it started, with what whiskey that we know today, and kind of... And, and, and ironically enough, you've got, you know, you've got... Whiskey, the Japanese whiskey is spelled, um, if you look on here I and mean, you see Nika whiskey, without the E. Oh, yeah. So, oh. Um, and then the, the whole difference between the E or the non-E kind of thing kind of comes down to the translations of, uh, of, of you know, the, the, native, the native tongue of Irish Gaelic and, and Scottish, you know, uh, and how they translated the word, you know, whiskey. Oh. Um, so there's really no significance in terms of how or the or the distilling process or the you know any of that in terms of what is one what is the other. Mm -hmm. It's just that the Japanese learned how to make it um, specifically from them, and I think that this in, in Scotland has since they've had a long tradition of making whiskey, they've really held on to things that they're claiming as their own, right? And so right. They, they've That's probably they probably. Um, sort of have tapped into this a little bit more and grab more of a hold of regulating who can use what and whatever. And, and, and I think because the Japanese had gone over and, and really learned from them, they allow mm -hmm. them to, to, you know, as they're following their processes and, and the way that they do things, allow them to, to spell it this way. Because, you know, um, but at any rate, um, you got a, an it's interesting. For us? So we have, uh, you know, th this, is, uh, this is one whiskey one of the, one of the, the top whiskeys anywhere it's it's highly sought after um, I bought my first bottle of this at $75 a bottle wow. probably about 15 years ago wow. um, at that uh, at that tasting I went to yeah uh, for with my friend but now and this is you've seen this I see this for sale for 675 dollars so, wow! Wow! You know, it's probably better than most. We'll take two shots of that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this one, this one, this one whiskey of the year, I think it was like 2007. Really? So you had the Japanese actually beating out wow. Scotland 
right? Um, you know, the student really overtaking the master. And so, oh my so God! Yeah. Well, they're all about um, technique. I'll tell you that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. like, look at baseball. So, yeah. I mean, right? I but mean, just it's like, you know, and, and we'll 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 do this. Uh, I think, and we'll give this to you in the uh, in the in the Norlin the Norlin whiskey glass. All right, my favorite glass. Um, Thank you. Let's not. Uh, let's not. We'll, we'll keep this for a, uh, a nice little pour here. Oof. Nice little pour. That's what about probably twenty five dollars, thirty dollars of crazy. that bottle. You, if you're gonna go and get a shot of this, it's probably gonna cost you about a hundred. Wow. Maybe maybe more. If, and that's even if the bar. Are you paying this guy with the? No, even if the bar has it. <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, you know what? I break Posters. this out. I, I break this out once in a while. I, I mean, let's say, I mean, the, the bottle. I've given I don't know three or four of these of these bottles as gifts oh. over the prior I'm to it too, becoming so. the Yeah, there you go. But uh, I think the last wow. one I bought though was uh, was someone had uh, I bought the one bottle. Oh, it's almost like a. Yeah. I already cheated. It's like a. Ch it's like almost like a cherry. It's there is some cherry notes on this for sure. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I've noticed the color too. It does it definitely has more of a, mm. a reddish tint to it. It's definitely darker. Um, it is a lot more. It's a lot more oak. I just had a but dark. It's probably the smoothest whiskey I think. Yeah, I've had. I just had a dark bourbon yesterday yeah. at the cigar store, and I was like, and it was dark like this, and I was like, what is this? And and uh, my buddy who works for, uh, uh, he's an attorney for a big uh, Jim Shoe brand, and he's like, and he loves a good cigar, and he loves a good bourbon. And he's like, no, it's a it's a dark, um, like a. Dark cherry bourbon, basically. Mm, yeah. This is this is great with a with a mild cigar like a robusto, mm. kind of mm -hmm. the perfect size mm -hmm. for this. A uh, piece of caramel, good mm. good high quality chocolate. It's a great dessert. Um, I don't know. I wow. I wish I wish I had enough of it to be a, to, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. to be a daily drinker. Well, although as much as this is like it, it tastes fantastic and everything, I think I'm like I still like. I, I, right now, it'd be interesting to see which whiskey we all like differently. Uh, without even saying, well, I'll say I like the first one from the very beginning that we had. Her. Yeah, I think I'm on the this second one's kind of, one. You're on you know, what, I, I think, yeah. and I think you guys are going to be surprised, to be honest with you. And we have, there's still two we haven't even touched yet. Right. Oh. But I think you're going to be surprised, and, and I know what my favorite is on these. Yeah. And this is this is amazing, but it's not it's not the Amazaki 18. Hmm. So I've so, got my favorite, but we'll talk about that. So what is? Yeah, what is that one? That's not the eighteen. That's the twelve. No, no, no. 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 So this is this is the eighteen, and then the, and then here's the twelve. So yeah, so what, I really what, like that twelve. What are we drinking right now? This is the eighteen. And but so he's we, saying his favorite isn't the eighteen. My favorite is not the eighteen. Well, I've I've had oh, that happen with other you know um, yeah. blends that I've drinking and scotches and everything, and mm -hmm. I'm like, no, oh, I like the twelve better than the eighteen, yeah. or but, whatever. Maybe. But this is when you finish. You know, you don't you don't pour this one out, right? And don't backwash it because if I have to put it back in the bottle. I mean, <laughs> I'm scared. Don't, <laughs> hey, don't drink all of it. Then. <laughs> I don't think you've, you've been on our podcast enough to know. Yeah, 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 no, we, we don't waste it. liquor. We're yeah, going yeah. to finish these. Absolutely. We don't backwash. But uh, yeah, no, you know, the only two is that backwash. I want to say I've had a great time, so I'm going to give you a, give you a oh uh, my god give give you a, a, a my schwag, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Is, is the chip. So I love that. The whiskey spy, the whiskey spy chip. The whiskey spy chip with a custom logo from a friend of mine. Custom logo. Yeah. So, I don't know. Oh, I it's love a, these, dude. Yeah. It's, it's a business card. It's a conversation yeah. piece. One of the one of the funnest things I've. I've, I've I think it's a really today. fantastic branding, so, and love uh, them I mean, I, I, I yeah. It's, I think it. I'm not going to say it beats my coasters, but it does. It does. Thanks. Yeah. When we, when we go to uh, when we go to Vegas, we're gonna have uh, yeah, some yeah, nice yeah. Uh, yeah. placeholders on our uh, yeah, yeah. cards here. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah, I got to get these made up. So, um, well, I mean, what's next? Well, I think I think uh, I think we have two, we still have two more. So <laughs> oh, I mean, we have drivers. I mean, it, yeah, we, yeah, we, we got drivers. So this drivers. podcast is we got sponsored PAs, by Uber. We got PAs and drivers <laughs> and, yeah. Uber. For when you have yeah. too much Japanese whiskey <laughs> on the podcast, if we get in an out yeah. truck to pull out, yeah. so we'll be fine. Know. Don't worry yes. about it. Um, so no, I think we got two more. We'll, we'll jump into. So why don't we do that in our next episode? Absolutely. Um, because think, we want to definitely get into our. Uh, uh, I think there's some there's some crime element in Japan yeah. that we need to get into. Is there yes. not? Oh, there's definitely a crime element in Japan Great. that we need to get into. Yeah. So let's yeah. Uh, let's do that. Let's uh, 
We're going to take a station break. We'll <laughs> sit back and enjoy these, sit talk back off and camera, and, uh, and then yeah. we'll come back, right? And we'll be back. Well, today's episode has been sponsored by The Cat and Fiddle. We thank you very much. And uh, if you're there on Tuesdays, we're going to be uh, one of their sponsors for their trivia get-togethers. Do you know what trivia is? I believe that's where you ask questions to get answers. That, that is. Correct? And the question is today? How much whiskey have you drinking? <laughs> Drink. Wait, <laughs> drink it. Way too many. But thank you, Cat and the Fiddle. We'll see you Tuesday nights. If you could get some of the great swag that we pointed out today, like this beanie, or we've got coasters, and we've got books, and we've got stickers, and we've got pottery. So we'll see you there on Tuesdays. Thank you very much, Cat and Fiddle. So here we are. We're back. We're back. <laughs> three sheets in and three whiskeys to go. Now, what do we got? Two whiskeys, Steve? We got, we got two whiskeys to go. And then right. and probably a redo of one of your favorites after that. So, oh, I can't yeah. even wait. So, so uh, Just strap but, me up with an IV and <laughs> yeah. take a nap and we'll call yeah. it a day. <laughs> you know, that's what Steph and, uh, and the gang do because all the, all the girls are nurses. But anyways, but there is one aspect of this show that we have not talked about. And that is the mob aspect, mm, right? Mm -hmm. And I know that uh, we've been talking about the uh, Japanese mob and uh, the 30s uh, versus like where prohibition was in America. Mm -hmm. And uh, evidently, you know, in our off time, uh, Steve mentioned they didn't have a prohibition. It was, and uh, it wasn't a prohibition in Japan, right? Well, which is which is interesting because I, I did, you know, and I didn't know this until I was I was asked to, you know, participate in uh, in, in, the, in the podcast. And I did a lot of research. I just literally racked my brain. I, I, I spent a couple of hours looking into things, and and I realized there is no prohibition in Japan. And so, wow. ironically, wow. what I've sort of come up with is the fact that um, you know, through, through things I've read, through on various things online and whatever, that there really was no money in alcohol huh. in Japan. Wow, because that's right? that's where that's all the Wow. Crime syndicates in America came about really when prohibition hit because then they found a way to make money off the booze and importing it and, and regulating it and controlling it themselves, such as out of Schofield's flower shops with uh, yeah. you know, the, the Irish mob there yeah. in Chicago. I mean, yeah. so, so, when you have, so when you had, when you don't have prohibition, right? I mean, people. You know, black market stuff, right? Things are right. things are cheaper. If there's no money in it, if it's all mm -hmm. it's already kind of allowed and enabled and, and legal, mm -hmm. you know, the yakuza who've been around for 400 plus years, um, you know, they control they control a lot of things, but they had no really no part in in whiskey or alcohol production. Wow. Mm -hmm. What they owned was they owned the clubs and the bars. Right. They and within the bars and the clubs, they controlled the gambling. The racketeering, the prostitution, some of the drugs and the opium trade and some of the other things there. Huh. That's where the money was. Right. And, wow. and then eventually gun running and some other stuff. But nothing really did. The alcohol was just sort of there. And and they were able to get it because it was it was made. I mean, so they, they're drinking good soshus, rice whiskeys, mm -hmm. plum wines. Huh. Um, when whiskey came, they, they started drinking whiskey. And wow. then they were importing stuff also. I mean, I don't doubt that they were importing things from, from Europe and America and whatever, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, during, during the Prohibition era here in the States, that didn't exist in Japan. So I, huh. I found that was kind of an interesting yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, anecdote it, that I, I didn't, I didn't realize. The, yeah. inter the interesting thing, I mean, when what what I grew up hearing uh, in regards to the Irish and the Italians, by the way, uh, is that, um, of course, those of you don't know, it's uh, Italian, Irish here, but um, the O'Banion was always about the good whiskey, and he was uh, against prostitution, so he. He did not want any prostitution because he was a devoted Catholic, and he would uh, donate a lot of money to the Catholic Church, Holy Name Cathedral. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's Italians care. Yeah, and, and uh, where prostitution was running <laughs> rapid, when the Italian side and the Cicero side, and yeah. uh, then the whiskey was just uh, um, a second nature, you know. But uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I, I don't doubt though in Japan though, you know, you had you had these clans of, of yakuza, or before they were yakuza. I mean, you had these samurais, and you had other other mm -hmm. clans of families and things that had probably recipes and and you know sort of their own brand and style of how they made 
alcoholic beverages right. that right. would be more akin to, to, their, to their clan. So I have, a, I have a good friend. He, he's a tattooer, uh, William German. He tattoos out of the Orange Door in Huntington Beach. He actually went over to Japan to tattoo, and he had oh, to wow. meet up with a member of the Yakuza to get blessing to essentially tattoo there because they still, to this day, kind of control all the tattooing. What uh, you mentioned the bars and that, like, kind of, can you talk to some of the history as to the Yakuza, what, you know, there or in what I they mean, were I doing? Think, you know, I think obviously, you know, again, they, they've been, they, they started, you know, 400, they, they, I think their origins go back 400 plus years. Wow. They were, um, you know, again, in, in terms of, in terms of things that they controlled, I mean, they, you know, they were started by, by warriors and, and guns for hire, mercenary type, swords for hire, rather. Hmm. Um, and they, they controlled a lot of the, a lot of the weapons. They controlled, mm -hmm. you know, they were obviously within clan warfare. I mean, they, they spent a lot of time, uh, you know, controlling it like that. They, they controlled, um, they opened up bars and where you had people going. And finally, it wasn't really until probably, um, you know, a little later into the, into the after kind of the 20s and 30s or whatever, where you had more middle class Japanese able to, able to sort of purchase whiskey and other things. And, you know, that, that might have been a little bit more elite at the mm -hmm. time. Um, and <coughs> and uh, people were more drinking. They, they were sort of drinking more. They realized that, you know, this, this is a place for communities to go and whatever. And they realized that they could probably make money off of some of these mm -hmm. people. And, and, um, and then they're controlling businesses and everything else. I mean, kind of standard right. mob stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, okay. yeah. But, yeah. but it's just that the alcohol piece of it was kind of ancillary and not really seen as a money maker. <laughs> Amazing. They didn't, see money, they didn't see money in it. They saw money in the bar and the establishment, right? Mm -hmm. which is where people were coming to, to drink these things. But, right. But everything know. else went along with it. Right. Right. Okay. Well, let's get drinking. Yeah. Okay. Well. <laughs> <laughs> So, right. so we have a couple more, so it's a couple new things out. Um, so you've got a, a, a Suntory uh, distillery, mm -hmm. Habiki. Um, you've got this Nika other distillery. They're the two main distilleries in Japan, really. Huh. This uh, show is sponsored by this. Habiki. <laughs> well, or Habiki, or, we hope you or, will sponsor our show. Or Yamazaki. Yes. Or Yamazaki. Yes. Or yeah. Hakushu. If or you Hakushu. are a whiskey distillery um, yes. and you want to sponsor our show, we're very open to Yes, that. very open. <laughs> we like drinking. Um, and then he had, and he's got the uh, the single malt uh, Yochi distillery. This, wow. These two. So this is not a single malt. This the the, the Habiki is a, is a blend. Okay. Um, it's a okay. Blend, a like a wine. Different, yes. Um, this one, this is a, this is a pure malt, mm -hmm. uh, single malt, um, but it's these are non-age stained. So you know where you had before we're drinking the twelves and an mm -hmm. eighteen, or in, in Scotland you've got you know big things on eighteen year old whiskey, twenty five year old whiskey. It goes up, mm -hmm. the price goes up from there. Price and age, unfortunately, um, in in the U.S. market and across the world, people think they correlate, and they really don't. Hmm. There are some great whiskeys that are eight years old. Right. There's some great whiskeys that are 48 years old. Wow. Um, there's, you know, I think these two, these ones, you know, again, in terms of, in terms of age statement, because there's been such a demand for Japanese whiskey, uh, really the Japanese have been running out of stock to really kind of flood the U.S. market with. So they've created sort of an offshoot of that. They still make some twelve huh. and some some you know eighteen hmm. year stuff, but they're they're trying to really put out to the masses the non age statement, and hmm. and you and a lot of them are going that way. McAllen's going that way. Hmm. Um, they're putting out things that are that are not don't have an age on it because because they realize that again age doesn't equal <coughs> quality. Um, I mean, there's times that there's young whiskey. Well, I don't know. Look at me. Great, but, yeah. <laughs> Exactly. You're an acquired taste. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. That, that's the best um, way to describe it. Yeah, yeah, that. exactly. <laughs> Remember that. But um, but so 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 they got these two out. These are these are pretty standard. You can find these pretty much you know in most high end high end liquor stores around LA. They're um, they're great daily drinkers. They both run somewhere around the eighty like seventy to eighty dollars a bottle range. I don't think it's out of it's a little pricey for, for yeah. a bottle, but yeah, sure. you know if you're if you're buying a sixty dollar bottle of wine, you better finish that sixty dollar bottle of wine and that night, 
right. or by the next day. Because yeah. after that, it's no really good. Right. You're not going to finish this in one night or even no. two nights probably, right? You don't well, know. Unless you're, unless you're, <laughs> yeah, well. Yeah. Just, unless you, unless we'll probably finish it by the time we, with, we uh, clean up the office 59 here. 59 Club, Fred Iron Rebels, Motorcycle yeah. Group. I mean, we're, we're going to put it like yeah. we did. Yeah. yeah. But either way, most, most for me, I'm not going to. Right. But this is going to stretch out a little bit. So to me, if you look at if you look at buying, you know, a sixty, eighty dollar bottle of whiskey, you know, that's a good investment. But you're going to enjoy it mm -hmm. for a, a quite a long period of time. So with that, um, so in terms of glassware, what do, what do we need? So say we, we've gone through the Glencairn, mm -hmm. we've gone through the, yeah. the New Orleans, and then we haven't done dishes yet. I think we got but, the best one but day term, for last, right? But you yeah. know, if you, if you leave something sitting around here long enough, it's bound to have scope <laughs> space on it. There you have so it. So we we branded. So just standard there you are, Scope. Whiskey you glasses go. with uh, Scope here. There you go. Um, and uh, I, I, I might even heavy. Just, yeah. I might just leave these stickers on there. But you should. Oh, yeah, exactly. Should. I mean, you know. you know. And I need at least three or four other stickers to yeah. put on the other yeah. one. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it upped the value of these. But yeah, exactly. You know what? So, Scope, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pour you some of the Habiki here. Okay. Um, we're going to go from there. So, let me have your glass. Uh, the Habiki, you know, an interesting thing about... This, That's good. This bottle. <laughs> <Jesus>. um, <laughs> hey. this, this, so if you've ever been to, if you've ever like been like duty free, and here, Chris, I'll, 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 I'll put you some of the, the Yochi. Okay, we're going to sw swap. Um, 60, or 96 proof here. But uh, I'm going to have some of this one. Mm. Oh. But the thing is, you know, interestingly too, that, you know, this, uh, Jesus. This, uh, oh, we're in the drinking phase now. The, the tasting is over, right? This is just, this we're is at just the end of our show, <laughs> we're in the whether we like it or not. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Cheers. Um, wow. So, uh, to me, this tastes a little more American compared to anything I've tasted. Really? Yeah, I don't know why. Sort of tastes like a uh, Jameson to me. Give me that thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, let, me, let me taste that. Yeah. Really? Yeah, wow. I mean, <clears throat> let me taste yours. This is good. smooth. Taste that one. That goes down so, like water. What I was saying was, so if you look this at this, smells good. so if you look at this bottle, this bottle, I mean, it's, it's pretty. If, if you've ever been in like some of the duty-free places, of traveling back in Europe and Asia, and whatever, one of the customary things for Asian is to bring big gifts. And so, <clears> if you've ever seen those huge bottles of Chanel, yep, and other perfume, yep. Well, yeah, that looks like this it. very much. Yeah. So this is the mm -hmm. the husband and wife gift, yeah. yeah, right, and that's how they made it. That bottle. That's very nice. There, there's a there's a thing, and I and I can't quite remember, and I apologize for that. But there's a there's, there's eleven or so facets or something. Like the Twenty one facets around that bottle have a uh, have a have a symbolic. I mean, I could almost see. You know how you get um um you get glasses that have this type of cutting to them, yeah. right? And uh, my aunt used to um, in Chicago. We'd go. She was very. Uh, just prim and proper, and then we'd go over, and and she would have like a bottle of cognac in, in, a, in a glass like this, and then mm -hmm. she'd have her glasses, and then she, in the middle of it, she would have her cigarettes in a, in a glass, because everybody, the minute you got over it, it would just grab a cigarette yeah. and a drink and start smoking, and it just, remind, it just reminded me of my Aunt Virginia, who I just love dearly, and I, I miss her dearly to this day, and... Um, well, you yeah. know, it's a, it's a pretty bottle, it's one that's it's striking, yeah. it's great to bring out cool. with guests, um, and, uh, and I'm, I'm gonna leave that one with you. That, that ball, I'm going to give that one to you. So oh, well, thank thanks. you very much, Stephen. Thanks. Thanks. To you and, uh, and thanks, for, uh, thanks for having me. Oh, for sure. it's been fantastic. Thanks for, uh, thanks for all the, the motorcycle riding lessons. Oh. Because without you, I, I might be plaster on the side of the ball. <laughs> on, well, it's, it's funny. But, um, when he says that, it's like Steve got into riding and he rode with us on the last one. And we were like, and you've what, got how long? About 14 months in now? How long? Uh, yeah. 16 months. 16 right? months. Like 14,000 so, miles. 14,000 miles. So I've got uh, probably in the last 15 years, probably 150 to 200,000 miles, right? Wow. So I mean, that's you got to ride like baseball, yep. you got to hit the ball, you got to do whatever. Mm -hmm. But um, um, yeah, it's just you ride with those guys. And then uh, I mean, when you came home, did you not feel like just going through these little turns? It was like a different, right? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I mean, it was, you know, you, there's, so, there's so much, there's so much nuance and skill it's technique it's all technique mm -hmm. um yeah you know and uh and and i and i like the i like the fact of being really focused on it yeah mm -hmm. what i like also too the one of the best things about riding is is coming home 
and uh, reflecting on it over, over a really good glass of Japanese whiskey. Oh, right. So that's right. all I'm going to leave that with you. Oh, thank so you very much. So if we go to tomorrow, you can come back and you can, yeah. you can have some of that. Awesome. And, uh, and you know what? Um, I'd, I'd love to come back here again and, and, and bring yeah. you something else. We'll talk about Japanese bartending. We'll talk about some, uh, some do some do some highballs, some, some clear ice, and some other fun things. Great. Awesome. Stephen, where can, uh, again, where can people find you uh, on Instagram? Uh, whiskey Spy is my uh, Instagram name. That's no E in whiskey. W H I S K Y S P Y. S P Y. Yeah. Great. So it's a little Glen Karen with the uh, with the iris, the, the the James Bondy looking logo there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I love your I love 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 your card. Um, where, do you have one of your cards out? Where I, is it? I don't. Know. I already spent my chip. Oh, it's, it's <laughs> get a chip. <laughs> get a chip. I mean, yeah, yeah. Well, here it is. Here it is. I mean, right here. yeah. Oh, yeah. I showed it already <laughs> earlier. See, I can't remember, but wow, yeah. just a fantastic card. I mean, thank you so much for coming out to uh, join us at Schofield's Flowers Podcast. And uh, Chris, it's so good to see you again. I Likewise, mean, it was Scope. just like um, we're wrapping up here at what three ten. There's a hockey game at five o'clock, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. And uh, as long as you don't pass out. Do, so uh, of all the things we tried, though, does anybody have a favorite? Oh. oh, I still uh, the you. Yaka the 12, the 12. All right, let's chase that. Yeah, all right, that bring it back. That was my favorite. For and, sure. uh, and, and we're back. <laughs> oh, and uh, we're back. Wow, we've we yeah. right All right, here we go. That, that, was, was, that, yes, was, that, that was definitely my so, favorite. So I like the I think I like the first the, one. The Pete. You like you like you like this one. Yeah, yeah. So do we have another glass? Grab a glass over here, Stephen, and let's taste oh, it. Geez, oh, Denise. <laughs> Nothing like a dirty glass, right? Are we back? Right. Yeah, we're back. Yep, okay. we're back. We don't right. ever right. leave. Right. We right. never. Right. You know, with the internet, you never have to leave. This is someone's oh, wow. that they didn't finish. I think that was you. Scott. Feel, feel the. In, I mean, I didn't even realize that it is double. That is crazy. I didn't even realize it. Well. But um. Well, I don't know. Should we taste these? <laughs> <laughs> if you're no, trying to watch a hockey game tonight, yeah, I don't know. Actually, so, 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 I, mean, right. I, I like so, all of them, but, but yeah. we'll say, so my favorite yeah. of these, I mean, I, I actually I actually do enjoy these. As a uh, as a daily, to come home, you know, you can, you can go through the bottle, you don't feel like, oh gosh, I'm going to drink all my, my special yeah, yeah, yeah. stuff quick. Mm -hmm. um, this, the, the Siochi single malt is, uh, to me, is, is one of the best. So Nice, nice. That's what and you're I, drinking. And, that's what I'm. What, That's what you got. Oh, right here? I ended up okay. with. Uh, I like them. I mean, I like them all. You know what? Do you do you like this one? That was. That you can have this. What? No, no, let me have that one back. I'll give you this one instead. Because was this like, the first I've one? Got or like eight, yeah, was that? that was that's the, like eight eight that's the one I loved. I loved I've that. I've got one. like eight bottles of that. That's a different one. Fucking than the one Indian we, giver, huh? Yeah, no <laughs> he just um, wanted that one back. See how I did that? <laughs> right. No, Always. That, that's it, it's, I've got like eight of those. So when you're know, live and you say something, <laughs> then you got to stick to yeah, it. Right. Well, you i got to take this to the cigar store. Yep. Um, I go to Cigar Warehouse in, uh, in uh, Sherman Oaks on Ventura Boulevard. i got to tell you, it's the greatest place in the world. And, uh, Freddie, if you're not going to drive home right away, you should come by and have a cigar and a little more scotch. I don't know if scotch. I can drive home. <laughs> yeah. Are we going to do a cigar? All yeah, yeah, cigar. yeah. There, there you Actually, go. i got time. All right. Well, hey, Nothing listen, everybody. Um, we look at this table. Well, thank you very much. If you don't hear from us again, you know why. <laughs> yeah. you know, wait, wait till you see the edit on this, because it might be, it depends on what we're going to do the fun. Yeah, it'll be like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's our Instagram. Here, so let's drink to that, guys. If we have Cheers. to reshoot, we got to come wasted. Right? <laughs> right. Cheers. Thank you for joining us. Happy World Whiskey Day. Happy World Happy Whiskey, World Whiskey Day. Day. Thank you. That That's was great. That's a wrap. That's a wrap.